I still cannot believe, and I don't want to be sexist about this, but that an ordinary woman in the 1930s could come up with this incredible machine which goes against all possible scientific theories and get results. To this day in our own time, someone as sui generis, shall we say, as Charlotte Keppel, who was so all-embracing, so all-encompassing in the breadth and stature of her gifts, has somehow effectively and consummately written out of history. What all this is about is a narrative, how we create narratives and how we exclude from narratives. And Charlotte was a classic victim of exclusion. I didn't discover her until I was going through newspaper archives of the 1930s. And I came across this well-publicised young woman who was technologically brilliant ahead of her time, who was really well known in Ireland. We see the past all the time. Every time we stare into the nighttime sky at that vast myriad of stars, we're looking into the depths of time. The sheer vastness of space means that it can take millions of years for light to travel from a star to Earth. The Andromeda. Two million light years away from Earth. The supernova we see in that far off galaxy actually happened two million years ago. If we could see the Earth then. It is nineteen thirty eight. The end of a decade of unprecedented change. Madcap politics, social unrest, dingbat inventions, and exciting new scientific discoveries are all the rage. In the spring of that year, academics from around Europe gather for the presentation of one such discovery at Dublin's Royal Irish Academy. The discovery's author is a 28-year-old Irish woman by the name of Charlotte Keppel. Charlotte is a self-taught scientist. She comes from a long line of crackpot inventors. Obsessed by science from an early age, Charlotte spends her boarding school days fashioning Tesla coils out of hairpins and cutlery. I came across an old yearbook from her convent. And uh, within the pages of the yearbook, I discovered the most extraordinary story. The girls, as usual, after evening prayer, had returned to the, the refectory for their evening meal. No sooner had the Reverend Mother said grace before there was an extraordinary bang. Charlotte had actually blown the sacrocar dormant to bits with her, in the course of experiments with Tesla coils. Charlotte is promptly expelled from the nunnery. Liberated from the boundaries of a conventional education, Charlotte is free to serve apprenticeships with various physicists and chemists. It is during these years that Charlotte develops her revolutionary wave theory. I'm Charlotte I'm here today to talk to you about a new form of radiation that is a wave form very similar properties to light. As we all know, light travels at a speed of 186,000 miles per second, which means, what are we, uh, uh, it's six feet apart? Yeah, that's an estimate. It, it takes approximately six nanoseconds for the light to travel from you to me, which means I'm seeing you as you were six nanoseconds ago. The waveform that I've discovered takes approximately five years. Charlotte had stumbled onto something simple yet remarkable. Like the way astronomers see events in space as they happened millions of years ago, here is a slow traveling waveform all around us but invisible to the human eye that carries with it information from the past. Upon this eloquent discovery, she built the chronoscope. A machine that can detect these waves and render scenes of history in vivid images. The thing looks 
like a Heath Robinson invention. You, know, you, you wouldn't think it could possibly work until you see that footage. I think most people thought there was a man behind her doing all the technical work, but she did it. It sounds so futuristic, and yet all this was happening in the late 30s. Freisler was one of those odd characters who perhaps really only discovered himself in jail. It was while he was in jail doing time after the failed putsch that he discovered archaeology. And he became a self-educated archaeologist with a lot of cranky ideas. The Neger had a thick-lochigen Schädel as Schutz gegen the Speer and a kräftigen Unterkiefer. This is one of Dr. Freisler's films. He made countless such productions with his colleague of dubious academic credentials, Oswald Poppendick. You have to remember that Germany had been defeated at the end of World War I and was desperately humiliated because they were a military nation and they wanted to restore pride to the German people and they needed race theories to back up their policies. So a woman who had produced a machine which, as with television, could produce images of the present, she could produce images of the past, and they could prove to the world that they were right. Not everyone shares Dr. Freiser's enthusiasm for Charlotte and her chronoscope. Charlotte got into trouble with the Catholic Church because it seemed her chronoscope was going to give them a view into the past when they were looking for the canonization of this man, Father Matthew. technology to reveal the flaws in Father Matthew was, well, it was a political disaster. Look, it wasn't long before this that the Committee for Evil Literature had promulgated a ban on references to menstruation. So can you imagine the impact this had on a society that was run by a committee against evil literature? Can you imagine? Charlotte stokes further controversy when she insults a group of nationalist historians with images of their heroes in the 1916 Rising that don't quite match the glorified historical narrative being taught to Irish schoolchildren.
there were attempts to break up the machine. Late at night, uh, there was a ferocious pounding at the door and masked men arrived in. They threatened to cut uh, Charlotte's hair off and they said that they would kick her machine from here to Cork with her in it. Her spirit almost broken, Charlotte nevertheless presses on with her research, despite the intrusion of the public and newspaper hacks. My machine is built purely as a tool for scientific research. The intention is, and always has been, in the interest of science. Help us understand the truth about our past. But on the evening of March the 9th, 1939, her work is rudely interrupted. Helmut Buhler was a young officer on the expedition. Yeah, this expedition was an only disaster. This this uh, chronoscope leaves from Dr. Freisler nichts mehr übrig. Bei Ausgrabungen zum Beispiel kamen nicht deutsche, sondern polnische Sachen zustande. Wir kamen an, an Städten, wo angeblich früher mal fantastische, großartige deutsche Städte gestanden hatten. Aber in dem Chronoskop konnte man nichts anderes sehen als Generationen und Generationen von kleinen, fetten Menschen, die mit ihren Schweinen zusammen in Schlammhütten wohnten. When you're dealing with myth, you're dismantling something very close to people's identity. And you cannot touch myth without being at risk, in a very real sense, sometimes of your own life. As the months slip by, Charlotte's defiance turns to fear, as pressure mounts on her to produce a satisfactory image for the Nazi party. A battle rages between the Nazis' desperate hunger for images to validate their philosophy and the visions provided by the chronoscope. It reaches crisis point. Ich döste vor mich hin und wurde plötzlich aufgeschreckt von dem Geschrei von Dr. Freisler, der behauptete, dass der Apparat von der jungen Frau sein gesamtes Lebenswerk als Archäologe zerstört. Wurde immer wütender und wütender und begann mit seinem Haken auf das Chronoskop einzuschlagen. Und sie versuchte, das Chronoskop zu verteidigen. Aber er blieb irgendwie mit dem Haken in dem Chronoskop hängen. Es gab eine riesige Explosion. Das war das Letzte, was man von Dr. Freisler je gehört hat. Thank you. 
Around the world, the news of Charlotte's sentence is received with dismay. Allied leaders petition the Reich government for clemency, but their pleas fall on deaf ears. The Nazi ideologues thirst for Charlotte's blood. The prison authorities announced that Charlotte's execution is to be carried out on the following day hence. Charlotte had fashioned a Tesla coil out of bed springs, forks, and hairpins. She plugged the object into the cell's light bulb socket. It created a massive power surge. The Gestapo records reveal that Charlotte crossed the border into Switzerland two weeks later. After this, her trail disappears. What do I think of the care of Charlotte? I mean, speculation in many respects is kind of pointless in this. And there have been many mythologies and many rumours that have grown up inevitably around the figure of Charlotte Keppel. Well, there are some theories that she went to South America, um, which is be very ironic because that's where the war criminals went. She was written out of history. Her technology was written out of history. And do you know, almost within a year, almost everyone had forgotten that there had been this thing called the chronoscope which could look back into the past. Why? Because they didn't want to know about it. Charlotte, now quietly, and it seems deliberately, slipped forever from the public sphere. The eventual fate of the 20th century's greatest female scientist remains to this day a mystery. Our history books are simply a record of the heroic deeds and follies of the ruling classes. The chronoscope is a tool of enlightenment, to shine a light into the dark, forgotten areas of our past. It has shown us that history is written by man, but that the history of mankind is written forever in light. <laughs>